of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome to August 20th council meeting. All six of my colleagues, myself are here, Casey's here to keep us on the straight and narrow. And since I can't find it, we'll do department updates. I look around and I see John. <laughs> <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. So, um, bring you up to date. The guys have been patching from the brush cutter. They got their chip seal done. Now they're starting to pave with pub. So, things are moving along pretty good. On the work. Um, federal aid, Old 31 South, that's been completed. And uh, we're going to have final, ins final inspection on the 5th of September out there. Um, and it's looking pretty good. I mean, I think they've got everything squared away on it. Uh, and then uh, community crossing projects, Brooks, they started today out there in Albanabi Township on 900 East or West between Olson Road and Montana. So they're planning on doing the three north of Bruce Lake uh, before Labor Day and then Bruce Lake after Labor Day. I should say Lake Bruce. <coughs> you don't want to call it Bruce Lake, you'll get in trouble. Um, so those are going well. Um, I've got two appropriations you'll see tonight. The first one's for $94,000 uh, from MVH to capital outlays and that is for the backhoe the purchase of it. We've got it. It's in service. Everything's great on it, but we got to pay for it. So that's what the appropriation is for. And then the second one is for 190000 and this is to add extra funds to the bituminous account, and that's for road projects such as oil, paint striking, uh, and millings that we're purchasing uh, from this B&B out there on the 14. Uh, the paint striping is old 31 north of town here. We chip sealed up to the river bridge. We're going to stripe it and then we're going to grind off bumps on the north end of the bridge up to 110 and then stripe it when we're done. So uh, that's what that is. And then I wanted to talk to you about uh, these buildings. Um, last Last month, I talked to you about the shop out the highway garage. <coughs> Water's just running into it, and it is bad. Um, and we talked about putting metal on it, and you guys approved that. We had a quote for that, um, 29500 to re recite that building. Uh, and despite what he thought, which he gave me, teasing me but I was going past in the other day and I seen that building and they're doing the same thing they're metal siding it but they foamed and insulated it before they put the metal siding on and I got to thinking why aren't we doing that 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 big old block building has no insulation at all and now would be the perfect time to do that before we put the metal on I talked to Brian and Brian instantly agreed with me uh, he came out and looked at it. So we got uh, the insulation guys to come out and give us a quote to put insulation on before the metal, and it's going to be between twenty and twenty-four thousand to foam insulate that. Um, but it's also going to add more expense to the metal guy to put the metal on if we do that, because you can. so to do it with just metal. You're putting one row of two by fours on and then fastening your metal to that. To foam it, you got to bring that wall out a little bit to give you more space. So you put your two by fours and then you cross them, extend that out. You got about three inches there that you can foam. 
well, you're totally looking at at least 300 two by fours. You've got some trimming with the roof line and stuff. There's a f odds and ends that add up. And he said a, a good guesstimate would be an, add another 12,000 to his expense. So another 12,000 to the 29.5. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And he said that's probably high, but you know, you got to there's going to be expenses that we're not expecting. It's an old building. <coughs> so it, it makes sense to do it, and now would be the time to do it. I hate to kind of keep coming back and begging for money, but I hate to pass up an opportunity that maybe we ought to take advantage of at the same time. And we had originally, when you approached us um, about the metal siding on the highway garage, we had originally approved that, said go for it, and we pay for it out of rainy day. Correct. Is that what I said? Okay. Yes. Okay. So now the metal will be 41.5, and then you want the insulation. So another 24 ballpark. Yes. So basically double. So 65.5 total. Ballpark. Ballpark. Gotcha. And I, I hate to put a final, you know, it could be a little less, it could be right, right. a fudge more. I right. don't expect it to be right. lots and lots more, but it could be a thousand or so off. Right. Like I say, there's a lot of unexpected expenses. <coughs> but you're suggesting before the metal goes up, why not insulate the building? Mm -hmm. You mean you lose? You would probably regain that money just in fuel savings for heating that building. I would think. If you had a bad enough winter, you'd probably get it back in one year. Mm -hmm. But I, I about guarantee you four years you'd pay for that in fuel savings. And Rick's here, he can tell you the, the energy sucker. Mm -hmm. It just, it costs mm -hmm. a lot to heat that. Because mm -hmm. all you have is, I don't know, what is that, six, eight inch block hollow block between you and the elements. And 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 the so you'd already made arrangements for the, the metal, metal siding to go up this hmm? the metal siding to go up this year. Yes. Yet. He's coming very soon to put the metal on okay. regardless. Okay. We've already approved right, right. that. Okay. So we have to make so you'd like for us to give you the black or go ahead tonight so you can get a hold of the insulation guys so they can do their thing for the okay if you so desire yes <clears throat> why i think it's a smart move to put the insulation up <laughs> you can keep it out a rainy day yeah. which to me i think makes sense we still got we got 1.5. Oh, okay. plus in rainy, rainy day, day is we're flush in so, rainy day. If we're going to do it, I suggest keeping it in rainy day. I agree. Yes. Because some of the other expenses we got coming up. Yeah. I think it's a. I think it's a fine idea. So, anyone else questions? That's yeah. time to do it. Yeah. it it's pointless right. to put siding on without insulating. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I concur. Do we need a motion? You bet. To approve it. If not, if, if there are no other discussion, anybody in public question? What? Was the first, the metal siding, was that out of rainy day originally as well? Yes. Yes. I will entertain a motion to approve John's request to insulate. So moved. Randy moved. Second. I'll second. Chase seconded. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Get a hold of them. <coughs> <laughs> Do that. Um, it brings me to the next thing I want to discuss, which sounds like these buildings are falling apart. So we discussed also the salt building at Kiwana, which is a very large building. We've got probably a year and a half, two years of salt stored in that building. Um, we talked last time, I was going to get a guy under contract for putting a new roof on that metal roof. This is a different contractor. Um, 
and the plan was to do it maybe December or the first of next year, and I'd pay for it out of next year's budget. So I budgeted for that. For next year. For in next year's budget. Um, I don't have the money for it this year, but my point is, I went over there when it was raining here, what, a week, two weeks ago, a lot, and that roof is just leaking like a sieve. There's a hole in it about this big around in one spot. The salt's getting wet in places. <laughs> uh, I think it's a bad idea to wait until next year. But again, I don't have the funds for that. But you'd like for the roof to be? I, I think it'd be a wise investment to save your building before it falls in. Right. And, and you to save the cost salt. of the salt you've got sitting in yes. there. Can the contractor do it? He said, he, I talked to him, he said he could get on it in October. We take an IOU until January? Sure. <laughs> You're sure he will eat. I bet he will. He's got 60 days saved his cat. It'd just be hard to get a hold of for 45 days or <laughs> Yeah, that's no kidding. So. And you had money budgeted next year for the roof. I did. Now there's. And, there's something. And, and, and that was about how much? Uh, I think I budgeted forty-one thousand, and okay. this comes to I think forty-two nine. Okay. Um, but I've also got to be honest with you that there's other things over there that need repair. The building needs siding. It needs some concrete work done on the sides. But I could I could take that money budgeted for the roof. Yeah. And if, if if we could find another way to pay for the roof now, the money I have budgeted. I could spend it on those expenses next year and not bother you next year with that. And and then further extend the life of the building. Tremendously. Okay. These are long term investments. You betcha. Comments, my buddy? I, I don't know how we cannot what do you do? not yeah, do we it. Have well, I mean, we have you, to you got, take care of the buildings. You got a, a large investment in salt that's getting wet. I mean right. what do right. you do? That is a no-brainer. I have a suggestion, and I think a very good suggestion, that we take this money out of Coom Cap. There's $585,000 in Coom Cap. Since this is a capital expenditure, we can take it out of there. And based on what other Coom Cap items are already spoken for, it'd be a good place to take it out of. So. Um, and we have funds remaining. We, yes. In Coom Cap. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that is my suggestion. So again, it's not my suggestion, but it was right, suggested right. to me. So. Uh, so. I will entertain a motion unless someone's got that we approve that out of Coom Cap. And have the roof put on this year. Yes. Oh All right, Steve, may the motion approved. I'll second. Lori, second. All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you very much. You're going to be busy with these buildings this fall, aren't you? I think so. Good. I think, I think it's a wise decision. Yep. You know, like I say, they're long term. Well, and it'll extend the life of the buildings. You know, we need a, uh, we've all talked about it before, we need a new shop out there. Now's not the time. I mean, financially, we all know that. This buys us more time. And even if you do build another shop, that building will be there and you can still utilize it. So it's win win. Yep. Maybe you wouldn't have to build as big of a new shop. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Any questions for John? Thank you much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Krista, do you have anything? Oh, Krista's not here. But I can tell you what she said last night. Okay. I don't know how official I am, but... Can, can, I, can I make an announcement oh, first? Oh, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> or there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys know it or not, but Brittany is going to be our new 911 director. She, oh. she was appointed last <laughs> night. Uh, she will start when? September 9th, September I believe 9th. it is, officially. So, But she get, did get appointed last night. Don got appointed to the uh, EMA director position last night. So, and Don, Congratulations, ladies. And I think Don officially started today as her new job. Is that correct? I did. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. Now you can Do go Do you want on. me to give the update or? 
if you're more than welcome. Well, if they I haven't want officially to. served yet. I don't even have keys to the office, but the only update was <laughs> that their newest dispatcher um, finished EMD training, so she's up to date. And then secondly, Krista said she printed a bunch of apps for me to go through and I get official on the night to hire the open position that we have. That was it. When was that September again, please? September 9th. Thank you. All right, Dawn. Well, I'm looking for my notes from last night. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll try to wing it a little bit here and just off of what I know. But as you see, Amy and I got in here a little bit late. We've been over at Warsaw looking at their uh, facilities, talking to them about their heating and cooling, and I'll let her catch you up a little bit more from that. It was a good process um, one of the things that will concern you guys and down the road is I did get their budget so we'll be passing that around to everybody and and uh, I sat on the Hope Committee now with Amy and them so i um, already wearing multiple hats for you guys in the county so I'll keep that up as much as I can um, the only thing concerning as far as my financials and my budgets and stuff that I passed on to the commissioners and I'll pass on to you guys I had a contract that I was handed down, kind of, sort of. Um, that was actually back from Larry Hoover. It was worked through with Craig when Craig was still deputy. It's for a system called Everbridge. I was trying to get rid of it because it's not utilized to its full potential. After talking with Rochester PD, everybody at the county, and the fact that I can't cancel it because it takes a 30-day notice, it's in my budget. I will cover it this year, and we're going to try to utilize it to see if it's something we want to keep in 25 so as far as my budget goes tomorrow there's LEPC is doing the lunch and learn for the corporate tier twos in the county you guys are more than welcome to come it'd be great so we'll be at the fairgrounds from 11 to 12 30 tomorrow and always having a helicopter landing training that we'll be going to tomorrow evening and Thursday and Friday right now or you know what <laughs> so, um, the only other thing is we are involved, EMA volunteers, with the parade at the end of the month here. Um, and I will be utilizing um, the <coughs> volunteers there. Me moving into this position now obviously leaves the deputy director position open. Um, so we'll be crossing those T's and dotting those dies eventually with the deputy director's position. So, <coughs> did I forget anything from... Those that were here last time, because I'm literally winging it off of. Okay. Can I ask a quick question? What is Everbridge? What's the purpose of it? Everbridge is to notify public service um, of <coughs> emergencies and such in the county. Um, it's what I found so far in going through it. It's not hugely user friendly. So, and I have talked to Rochester PD, and they. They're wanting to look at something too. So they're going to come out. We're going to bring Everbridge out, get us up to par on it, see if it's something we're going to utilize and keep. But we have to keep it this next year. Are we still using Nixle or any other service? It, it's a replacement for Nixle. Yeah. I, I think that went out and this replaced it. Okay. okay. Thank you. That was before my time. So. <laughs> but um, Highway Department does use it too as far as the Everbridge system. So it's a system that's utilized and can be utilized. but. It, Am I not correct in saying it's not a user-friendly program? What what program, when the sheriff's office sends out their weather alerts, is that through that program or is that completely no, different? That's completely different. And I don't know what, what they're using. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure either, so. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> okay. Amy, anything you want to discuss? Yeah, so, um, so grateful to Don and um, Pastor Meyer who uh, came to Warsaw today. So um, we are we were asked by Gail um, and others to uh, research a heating and cooling station um, to be able to address uh, individuals um, who may need those services um, that are homeless. And so we've been doing lots of research and trying to figure out what to do um, and. Fellowship Missions was the model that we felt like made the most sense. And so we've had two teams go there. Um, we've had uh, one team with the leadership team, and then today, um, Don and Pastor Meyer. And so we've got the best practices and um, 
preliminary budgets and such. Um, so this is something that Trent has asked us to do to put a temporary shelter together. Um, in um, the meantime, while they're working on a long-term project for uh, homelessness and um, a shelter, permanent shelter. So that was, I think, very helpful for us to get more data and to have others see it. So we will circle back around probably in mid-September to bring the full team, including pastors. Um, the hope is that the church community who has signed up to be a part of the team will carry the weight for the current volunteer situation. Um, and so much work needs to be done, but we think that we've got enough planning done and we can actually get to just work and make it happen because the winter will be here before we know it. Um, so that's pretty neat. Um, as well as tomorrow morning, I do not know the time, but um, I sit on the Beeman Home Board um, in Kosciuszko County and I was informed on Friday of this last week that um, they are putting somebody here. So we had been working, I've been working with um, uh, Commissioner Ranstead and um, Summers to be able to talk about, and uh, Kathy to talk about more permanent um, placage of someone who is dealing with, um, who can provide um, services dealing with domestic violence. We can't move fast enough on that, and the need is very great. So they have, um, they will be loaning us one of their employees every other week, uh, I believe on Wednesdays, starting tomorrow. So this individual will be housed here in Fulton County. I've already talked to um, Chief Schatz about that to let him know, and the prosecutor's office as well. Um, and so that person will be sitting um, at Recovery Cafe, available to help in whatever situation needs to be um, helped with for services. So um, it's neat that they're doing that for us, even though it's not ideal and not perfect in what we wanted, but it's something to fill the gap until we can get services taken care of, so. So let me get this straight, Amy, if, if I'm thinking right. Okay, so somebody comes to you and says, hey, I, you know, I've been battered to work, we're gonna get help. You send them up there to talk to this, wo this woman, this yep. lady, and, and she'll get them help. Yep. So put a point them in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So she'll do the intake and understand what the need is. If there's a, a, a situation that is very dangerous, then they would probably try to find transportation to get her to the Beeman home as quickly as possible so that she's out of danger. <coughs> um, if it's just something that maybe is outpatient services, they will figure out how to how to do those um, activities. And the Beeman Home in Warsaw will take Fulton County patients because they are connected with Fulton so, County. So yes. So one of the things that the um, that they the board had actually um, been remiss on is that they really do, per their mission, cover Marshall County, Fulton County, and Kosciuszko. And they had really not been able to do the uh, outreach in Marshall and Fulton County as they had wanted to, so they asked someone from Fulton County to sit on the board as well as Marshall County, trying to understand the needs. And so um, we've been advocating for that here. And um, so, yeah, so anybody- well, That'd be great to get the word out. Yeah, and we'll be on the, uh, I believe that the new interim director has us on the radio on August 30th, because that's when she'll have the final details of everything. We'll be able to, to say, we're giving um, Recovery Cafe a chance to host us to see if that works out, um, but we're not 100% sure if that's the right place or not, so we're not gonna make the, per the location permanent until we feel like we've got a settled place for her for every other week, so, um, but that will be determined on August 30th. We'll make sure that we get that out, so, Amy. <coughs> Well, she's a recovery cafe. Are they giving her a office? They, a private, they said that they, that's what, area? so yeah, so Pat has offered, um, stating, and we were on a Zoom call with him, okay. um, that he does have a private office that is okay. unused because she also needed access to printers and telephone, and I can't remember the other services that she needed, and Pat said he had them, <coughs> and so um, she is, showing it tomorrow. She'll be then at the service provider meeting for Fulton County Hope has service provider meeting tomorrow, free lunch, 1130 at the library. All welcome. Um, but she'll be there to meet all the other individuals um, and to welcome her to the community. Um, and if indeed it doesn't work out, she says that it's not the right place, then uh, Fulton County Hope's fully committed to help find her 
the right place. But yeah. we want to give Pat a chance since he's requested that he have her there. They have, um, I guess, some Thursday evenings as lady night, ladies nights. And they wanted to provide some domestic violence training <coughs> to their residents or to their members, excuse me. And so he'd asked if that could be something they could do. So, so it's not, you know, it's not exactly um, all settled, but yeah. at least it's a step in the right direction to provide services. So okay. Andy knows, like I said, I haven't seen Sheriff Sailors, but I think he's out of town, so I haven't told him um, to, yet that that's the case. But um, yeah. They'll be a, he, she will be available to provide services. So. Thank you. Any questions for Andy? Nope. None. Nothing for you? Nope. Next then, we will move on to minutes. And I have a question. Okay. About this. I, I've got four minutes here. Yes. But I only have that I'm fine unless I put it somewhere that I can't find, which is highly possible. <laughs> that they, you have four sent out. So. Because everyone would have had a chance to read. So I think that we're looking at the July 16th council budget meeting. Yes. July 16th a budget presentation meeting. Got it. And July 23rd budget presentation meeting. Okay. And when? The 13th been sent out? Is that? August the 13th? Yeah, that's this one. Well, let's pull it because I hadn't seen email. People haven't had a chance to read it. Okay. I haven't seen it. So let's do it that way. Okay. <clears throat> here real quick um, is everybody doing okay today <laughs> okay that's good and we're all moving around and uh, let's see here okay here we go um, just wanted to give you an update on Fulton County, and we've uh, encountered another death affecting additionally yesterday. So, so far for 2024, we've had 98 people pass away here in the county. Um, that would be 52 females and 46 males. Um, our death rate is down, which is a good thing. Um, it's down exponentially, but I will tell you our corners. Um, <coughs> if you will, that meeting the uh, needs of the families is still right there at about 36 to 37 percent. So um, we've had 36 cases out of the uh, 97 that have occurred here in the county. Um, I will tell you one thing that's kind of interesting that I didn't mention last night. Uh, we've only had 36 calls, but of that, we've had like 13 autopsies, which is kind of unusual. That's more like what we might have for the whole year. Hmm. But so that's approximately one third of the families we've served have required like an autopsy for varying reasons. We did have the one carryover from last year as well that uh, occurred last June. And so we have that to add in on our totals. So I hope I don't have to come and request any additional funding for the autopsy fund. but. I wanted to let you know that. So we've been very bus busy with that. Um, also, we've had many toxicology. I don't have the raw values tonight, but we have had many of those, and then a few labs that are done out at Woodlawn Hospital as well. So I wanted to let you know that. Um, let's see. Uh, <coughs> and of our uh, 36 coroner's calls, 22 are males and 14 are females. Um, in a couple of weeks, or I guess I should say the 27th of September, 
our corner state training board will be activated and meeting and we're going to be discussing uh, what happened back at our educational event back in June, how to improve strong points and things like that. So I'm excited to go down and be a part of that too. Um, tomorrow we have lunch and learn with LEPC and maybe uh, maybe you said something about that too, Don. But anyway, it's very exciting. We've got a lot of new tier two partners that are coming on board and they're at least inquiring to come and meet everybody. And Tony Passarisi, the chief of the um, Tijuana Fire Department, he's amazing. He's heading that, he's orchestrated it. So we're looking forward. We're gonna have two people from the Indiana Department of Homeland Security come up from Indianapolis to present so it'll be excellent so um we're looking forward to that i know steve's going to be there and if anybody else wants to come just let us know and i'll let tony know tonight so that's a big event coming up uh, we got the rochester parade and that's something that hasn't been on tap for a few years so we've been doing all the parades this year kind of showing off the vehicle we're very very proud of that i've got to tell you i'm so grateful and for instance like this afternoon i had a person come in from another county just a very appreciative of how beautiful our facility was and they said it's one of the nicest they'd seen and you guys know i'm <coughs> busting my buttons and very thankful and um, i'm i'm so grateful for that and i won't I, i'll probably tell you that a few more times but you don't know how i feel and I feel like our county has come a big long way and we're providing the very best for our loved ones, a place to rest, a privacy and like that. So I wanted to let you know that too. And we, we get compliments a lot and it just makes my whole week. So um, <laughs> I could tell you about our, um, <laughs> our births in Fulton County, but I won't because a lot of people heard that last night. Our birth rate is up. <laughs> Jillian's not even here tonight. I wonder if she's at the maternity oasis. <laughs> she could be. All right, well, anyway, I thank you so much and I'm grateful that you allowed me to talk. I, sorry I was a little bit tardy, but I was actually on the phone with the doctor about uh, a pathology case that they, the pathologist would like to talk to him directly. So it took a little bit longer than I thought. So thank you so very much. Thanks, well, Jerry. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we have a little minutes. We've got three sets of minutes here. Uh, first one was our budget hearing from July 16th. Did everyone have a chance to go over that? Mm -hmm. If that's if there are any changes, I will entertain a motion to accept them as written. So moved. I'll second. What's your name? Phil. Phil. I've had a tough day. Phil. Lori second it. All in favor? <laughs> Seven zero. Thank you. We'll sign and pass it on. Next one is our regular council meeting on July 16th. I do have one correction. On my copy, it shows Wednesday, July 16th, and it should be Tuesday. So any other corrections or additions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve our regular scheduled meeting on the 16th of July. So moved. Pete moved to approve, second. <coughs> Steve second, all in favor? Seven zero. And lastly, was our budget on Tuesday, July 23rd, where we finished up all of our uh, budget hearings. So any changes or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve as read. So moved. Pete moved in. Phil right. second. There you go. All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you very much. Next, we have some additional appropriations. Actually, let's change it. Let's go to transfers first, and then we'll go to additional appropriations. Transfers. First one is twenty five oh three from pre trial diversion. 
to the prosecutor's office. Computer software maintenance, $3,809.61. Transfer to extra help, $3,961. To OASDI, a $500. Entertain a motion to approve the transfer. So moved. Bill moved to approve. Second. Chase, second. All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you. Next one is from the host fee, county council. We're moving this from contract $111,585.48 to equipment $111,585.48. To pay for equipment purchased for the Parkview Ambulance Service. Any questions? Entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Randy moved. Steve seconded. All in favor? 7 0. <coughs> okay, this is from the Health Department. <coughs> Transfer from Health Department Liaison, 17,466. Transfer to Public Outreach Supplies, $12,466. Contractual Services, 5,000. Moving funds to appropriate account number to pay for supplies and services. And the note that Denise put on here says this is for documentation purposes. So I know where to transfer from. The state has already approved the movement. So I will entertain a motion to approve the transfer. Pete moved. Do you second? I'll second. Lori seconded. All in favor? 7 0. And the last transfer is from County General. Office supplies $5,500. To building and other insurances, $5,500. Transfer to pay Woodlawn PCP contract presenting two separate transfers so bill is paid on time and the rest of the money is to be used for upcoming bills that are due. What's a PCP contract, Rick? Say that again? I, the, I was dreaming. What? What's the PCP contract? For what, what department? Woodlawn? Woodlawn. Primary care. <coughs> Primary care, yeah. Okay, all right. I just thought I'd ask. I'll, if there are any questions, other questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Bill moved to approve. Steve seconded. All in favor? 7 0. Okay. Now we've got additional appropriations. This is from Coom Cap. <clears throat> this is for the auditor. Financial and taxing annual payment of $18,857. Coom Cap Development Fund was reduced by DLGF and the auditor took the reduc full reduction. An appropriation is needed now for the financing, tax, and payroll software maintenance payment. Any questions? Uh, what does that really mean? Well, that's a good question, Chase. Very good question. I'm assuming that the auditor took, when the coom cap was reduced by the DLGF, the auditor took it out of her budget, which left her short $18,800 to pay for the financing and payroll software maintenance payment. Okay. <clears throat> that's, that's as I read it. Is that true? Can you help us? Sounds correct. <laughs> <coughs> I told you you're going to get arrows here on that, you? Uh, uh, We're on and, your right. Is that what it is? I guess I could have asked you. I'm sorry. You're right. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the additional appropriation. So moved. Lori moved to approve. I'll second. second. Bill second. All in favor? 7 0. We'll have a sign and pass it down. Secondly, 
And these are both with the highway department. The first one is out of 1176 for equipment's $94,000. It's to appropriate the funds for the new backhoe. And also this is from 1176 for highway maintenance is $190,000 for bitumus and mixed ag. Additional funds requested for fun road programs such as chip and seal and pug for a total of $284,000, all out of eleven seventy six. Any questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Steve, motion to approve. Second? Chase, was that approved? Or? Sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> I saw your hand bouncing, I'm sorry. Uh, Chase, second it. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. <coughs> Oh, uh, we will go on to old business, Pete. Yeah, real quick. Um, last Friday, Kiwana had the groundbreaking <coughs> ceremony for their uh, new water treatment plant. That they used some ARPA money and got the uh, federal funding to be able to afford that project. Nice servant or ceremony, not service. Um, and I got invited. And then by default, I was the county representative, so I had to partake of it. But it was a, it was nice to see the community, that project come to fruition for them and get started. So it was well attended. Yeah, there were several people from the community there. I know Michael Ladd from Fedco and Good. a lot of the contractors that were part of it. But yeah, I, I intended to be just a spectator, but you by default, picture. I was a participant. You got your picture <laughs> in the paper anyway. <laughs> Thank you for going. And yes, that was a very worthwhile opportunity to help. Yeah, they, they that, that community was able to approve something that never would have happened without. And glad we could help out. Yeah. Glad we got the ARPA funds. The ARPA funds and then those people <coughs> are taking that ARPA money and, and turning it into a massive grant to be able to afford that was, it was great to see something like that for a little community. Yes, it was. Good. Randy? No, I didn't have anything. Chase? No, sir. Corey? Steve? Bill? Yep. I don't have anything. Casey? <coughs> Anybody in the audience? Old business? In that's the case. We'll move on to new business. Pete? Yes. Um, <coughs> at our last job classification committee, something came to our attention that we wanted to address. Um, there is currently a supplemental being paid to a dispatcher for quality queuing of medical calls. And currently, when Parkview became our ambulance provider, 911 medical calls are now being transferred to Parkview. So basically that job doesn't exist. There's no longer a need to queue the medical calls at the uh, 911 center. So I guess I'm questioning the need to pay someone extra to do the job that's no longer being done. And, and you're, you're talking about <coughs> that, that requirement um, is not needed as of now Correct. and the rest of the year or beginning in 25? It's no or, longer, it hasn't been needed since Parkview took over okay. as the ambulance service. Okay. I mean, it's the way I understand it. Once okay. Parkview decided they were going to request medical calls be transferred to their dispatch center, okay. our dispatchers no longer take them. Okay. So no one has to queue the calls and make sure protocols were followed. Yeah, I mean, I'm not picking on anybody, but we're paying somebody that we're, we're paying someone extra for something that's not currently being done. And 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 you're how can I say, um, confident that someone is receiving payment for okay. I mean, we talked about it that day. Um, I was asked to bring it up at the next. 
council meeting. Okay. Okay. okay, way I understood it, yes, someone is being paid. <laughs> Brittany's got a comment if you guys are okay with it. So, I think it's super important that we keep the money there. I don't think anyone's name has to be on it because we have purchased um, priority dispatch police and fire, which they'll have to be a queue school for that. Right. Does someone specific need it right now? No. However, once I get into office, it's going to be important to me to hopefully get that queue to possibly go to Parkview and still be active in queuing calls. Because it's at the top of my list with the commissioner's permission and with Parkview to get those medical calls back into our center. Um, it's something I'm really passionate about. So. Yeah, I don't feel like we need to take the money out of the salary. Right. Because I just feel like, for the time being at least, the job isn't required to be done, so we shouldn't be paying someone extra to do it. Mm -hmm. no. I agree. Yeah. But don't take it away. It's a <laughs> That was one of her goals when we interviewed her, that her, her main mission was to get the calls back. Because anytime you transfer calls, it, it takes time, as she will tell you. I think, I think we was in a EMS meeting the other day and they said it was a minute 12 or something that it took to transfer them from, from time their dispatchers take them to transfer them over there. So, you know, it don't sound like a lot, but when you got, somebody's having a heart attack or dying or something, I mean, that's a big deal. So that was one of her goals that she would like to, to get that back, earn their trust and get it back, so. And it also goes for canceled calls too, and it takes them some time to relay that information to the EMS. And, exactly. And then stop, you know, and drive it past, essentially. Yes, and I will make it mandatory that those dispatchers stay on the phone for medical calls. And that's where it's gonna get kind of hairy is if a call drops and someone does take over that call to continue with priority dispatch, will it be a cue there? Possibly, but as of right now with the medics, medical calls being gone. Hey, I'm not talking about long. the future. I'm talking about we are currently paying someone extra money to do a job that's not required. Basically, we're paying them to, for nothing. They're not doing, the job's not required I'm not saying this person isn't doing their duties. The duty isn't there right now, but the money still is. If, if I'm explaining it clearly, I hope. No, this will be very good. Any other comments? Public? Wes? Wouldn't, I guess, <coughs> wouldn't all dispatchers be queuing up medical calls no. prior to Parkview? I guess I'm confused why it was just one person. It takes special training, I believe, to do that. Yeah, you have to go to Priority Dispatch Quality Insurance School and it requires a pretty invasive test. We're not talking about answering the phone. No, right. Um, no, it's just <coughs> there's a supplemental to do this for the certification to do this. And I'm not wanting to take it away out of the salary, whereas I'm wanting to suspend the pay because currently no one is doing that. And that conversation needs to have be had before September 9th. <laughs> <laughs> Rip, Rip, can you do that? Yeah, can, Rick, can the commissioners okay. talk to uh, Krista about just making sure that's not being added to the pay or something? Uh, well, it, BHR would have to check and see who's getting it, and, and if that's what you guys, I would I would think you wouldn't even take a council council decision. To tell you the truth, if. If you're you not, say would not? I wouldn't think so, would right. you? This yeah, is, this yeah. Is a, I wouldn't think a, it would be. I, I think all you do is... That's what a department head does is turn in the payroll and they're approving yeah. it so that department so I think we need to, to take care of it. I think I'll call Christina Haas and, and say, hey, if somebody's getting it, why? Yeah. You know, if right. they shouldn't be for this time being. So, I agree. Because she's that's a payroll. She's no. HR payroll. That's not so us. That's, that's yeah. not us. Now, what's, what's stated on the salary ordinance is us yeah but but she don't want that pulled off the salary order right. in case she ever needs to use it at, at right Understood. and that ought to be up you know the director proved that this one's went through school and then turn it into hr we it shouldn't even go through me or you either one it should go through hr to prove you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. hey don't shoot the messenger i was told to bring this up in your business no that's <laughs> great I'm glad you did What's the discussion? i will check in on that for you thank you Anything else, Pete? No, that's enough. I rambled on one. <laughs> Randy? No. Chase? Nope. Lauren? No, sir. 
Yeah. 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 I do. I know you do. The county's portion of the host fee collections for April and May this year totaled eighty-four thousand five hundred seventy-six dollars and eighty-six cents. Great. Yep, that's all I have. If you got a total for that, that's April, <coughs> April and May. No, to total what's in it? A host fee fund? Yes. If you oh, got what, what's in the host fee? Yeah. Do you want to know? Yeah, if you don't mind, please. If I can find it real quick. <laughs> I think it's on the last page. Yeah, it's on the last page. I think it's 2 8. How much? I'm going to guess 2 8. I can't think of the number. It, and you guys are taking $100,000 a, $100, a month out, out of that to pay the Parkview Hospital, is that correct? Yes. Okay. $800,000 the rest of this year. That okay. covers the ambulance, the extra over the ARP funds for the ambulance, and the 100000 a month. And then we'll have to start next year some of it as well. Have you got the claims for the ambulances yet? You, you, you yes, have, yes. Right? we've got them in and majority of them have been paid. Okay. What'd you do with it? Huh? That's all right if you can't find it. Yeah. I can bug Cassie tomorrow or the next day for it. She'll mm -hmm. give it to me. Mm -hmm. I can remember the number. 2.6. Okay, good deal. Okay. Now that's before the major expenses have come out. Oh, okay. Okay. And that is as of July 31st. Thank you. So six, eight, and plus another some extra expenses on the ambulance with the lawyers and that. Yep. And then after, well, it'll be the first year before we know what lit income we'll have from that. So what we need to. You start getting that in January? It's starting in October, but we're hoping to know some. We don't know how much. I mean, we don't know what the numbers will be. So at least give us three months of, so we know what the numbers will be to start the year with. Oh, okay. Okay. You actually start getting in October of this year? Yes. Okay. Yes. So okay. It's coming out of your wages <coughs> on April 1st. But, All right. Yeah, that, that way we got till January 1, then we can start after we get our distribution in January, then we know where we stand monthly as to what our income would be. Okay. So I have an Casey. Any mm -hmm. business? Anyone else? That's the case. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay, that's it. So moved. Chase moved to adjourn. Glory seconded. All in favor. Thank you very much, everybody.